Hello, and welcome to the fascinating world of epidemiology. My name is Dr. Ray Robinson, and I'm going to take you through a discipline that is important for combating diseases, both locally as well as globally. As we embark on this journey, it's important to note that while some content may not be featured on your STEP or your CAS exams, it could still play a significant role in your in-house exams, especially in courses where questions are crafted by faculty rather than the NVME. In this course, I will clearly indicate which content is relevant for the NVME exams and which might not be. However, it's crucial to understand that all content, as well as the method of its delivery in this course, has been carefully selected to aid in building a solid framework for scaffolding learning and enhanced long-term memory. This is the rationale behind providing quiz questions with accompanying videos where I dissect my thought processes in solving these EpiBioStats questions. By integrating this comprehensive approach, we aim to not only prepare you for exams, but to also develop a deeper, more nuanced understanding of epidemiology. Before we dive deeper into epidemiology and its application to evidence-based medicine, let's understand its core definition. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or the CDC, defines epidemiology as the study of the distribution and determinants of health-related states among specified populations, and the application of that study to the control of health problems. Using this definition tells us that epidemiology is not just about identifying health issues. It's about understanding who is affected and where and why. Epidemiology examines the patterns, causes, and effects of health and disease conditions in populations. It's a science grounded in the pursuit of understanding the complex interplay of factors that influence health outcomes, from genetic predispositions to environmental exposures and even behavioral patterns. Each data point tells a story, a narrative of health trends and disparities guiding us to pinpoint risk factors and effective interventions. This understanding is crucial, not merely for academic enrichment, but for practical application. It empowers us to design strategies that prevent disease and promote health, shaping the policies and practices that govern our healthcare systems. So as we move forward, remember, epidemiology is not just a subject. It's a lens through which we view healthcare and populations, driving our efforts to safeguard and improve global health. To paraphrase David Sackett's definition of evidence-based medicine, EBM is the thoughtful use of current best evidence in patient care decisions. It's about combining our clinical skills with our best available research and understanding our patients' unique health needs. Today, we delve into EpiBioStats, not just to ace your exams, but to build a cornerstone for your journey in evidence-based medicine. So why is this important? Well, imagine you're faced with a patient who has a rare, complex condition. Traditional textbooks may not offer clear guidance and standard treatments may not apply. How will you determine the most effective course of action? This is where your mastery of epibiostats becomes invaluable. You'll need to navigate through the latest research, critically evaluate that evidence, and apply it with precision to your patient's unique situation. Your ability to integrate this knowledge will be key in providing personalized, effective care. As we explore epidemiology, we'll see how it's not just a subject to study, but it's a tool that shapes our approach to disease prevention and treatment. Each concept we cover is a step towards becoming a physician who doesn't just treat, but transforms patient care. So let's embark on this journey together, not just for passing exams, but to emerge as healthcare professionals committed to practicing evidence-based medicine and improving health outcomes for all. Epidemiology is more than a branch of medical science. It's a compelling story of how disease spread through populations. Why do some diseases 
affect certain individuals while sparing others? This intriguing question leads us to the heart of epidemiology, which intersects genetics and environment in complex ways. Let's embark on a journey through history, starting with John Snow. From humble beginnings in a London slum, Snow rose to become the father of epidemiology. His quantitative work on the London cholera outbreak in 1854 didn't just solve a mystery, it transformed medical thinking. We'll explore how his insights laid the foundations for the rigorous evidence-based methods that guide epidemiology today. Our stories don't just end with snow. We'll also uncover the contributions of other pioneers like Ignaz Semmelweis, whose hand-washing studies in 1845 started to challenge the prevailing miasma theory, which wrongly attributed diseases to bad air. Louis Pasteur and Robert, Robert Koch further debunking this theory and supporting a germ theory of disease, reshaping our understanding of infection and prevention. As we trace these milestones, we'll see how each discovery from Snow's analysis to Coates postulates revolutionize our approach to modern health challenges. In our exploration of epidemiology, we'll uncover five key objectives that drive epidemiologists in their mission to improve global health. First, they delve into identifying disease causes and risk factors. Think of this as detective work, where unraveling the mysteries behind illness and health is crucial. For example, consider how epidemiologists identified smoking as a major risk factor for lung cancer. Second, they chart the spread of diseases within communities. By mapping disease patterns like the COVID-19 pandemic, they paint a broader picture of public health. Third, understanding the natural history and prognosis of diseases is vital. This involves tracing a disease's course from its onset to resolution much like following the progression of chronic conditions such as diabetes. Four, they evaluate preventive and therapeutic measures. This isn't just about finding treatments. It's about ensuring they work effectively and safely as seen in the rapid development and assessment of COVID-19 vaccines. And finally, they lay the foundation for public health policies. Their research informs strategies to protect communities, like the implementation of smoking bans to reduce lung cancer rates. Each of these objectives forms a crucial piece of the epidemiologist puzzle, contributing to a collective effort to safeguard and enhance health worldwide. Let's embark on an extraordinary journey through the history of epidemiology, a field marked by groundbreaking milestones we begin in 1854 with John Snow's revolutionary study of the cholera epidemic in London. His work laid the foundation for modern epidemiological methods. As we move along our time frame to the mid 20th century, we see the groundbreaking Framingham Heart Study, which began in 1948 and reshaped our knowledge of cardiovascular disease risk factors. Then we arrive at the recent and ongoing challenge of the COVID-19 pandemic. This crisis has not only tested our current public health strategies, but has also spurred innovations in epidemiological research and data analysis. Each point on this timeline is a defining moment contributing to our evolving understanding of disease and public health. Diseases don't just appear out of nowhere. They're the result of complex interactions between humans and their environment. Imagine this as a dynamic interplay where even minor changes can tip the balance, turning harmless settings into hotbeds of health challenges. In this intricate dance, pathogens often find opportunities to thrive. Take, for example, how urbanization and climate change have increased the prevalence of diseases like malaria and dengue fever by creating favorable conditions for mosquitoes. 
Epidemiologists are like detectives in this scenario, piecing together clues to identify risk factors and vulnerable populations. Their insights are crucial in understanding a disease's pathophysiology, its development, progression, and impact on the human body. Consider the recent COVID-19 pandemic. Epidemiologists played a key role in tracking the virus's spread, identifying high-risk groups, and guiding public health measures. This wasn't just academic work. It was a critical part of controlling the outbreak. Understanding these dynamics is essential, not just for academic knowledge, but as a vital step in our ongoing effort to prevent and control infectious diseases. Each study, each data point, helps us build stronger defenses against future health threats. To effectively learn epidemiology, it's essential to understand its unique language. This isn't just academic jargon. It's actually the backbone of disease analysis. Terms like incidence, prevalence, and mortality rate are tools that enable us to precisely describe, track, and compare the impact of diseases. For example, when we talk about the mortality rate, we're quantifying the number of deaths caused by a disease in a specific population. This helps us gauge a disease's severity and prioritizes healthcare interventions. This common language is the key to effective disease surveillance. It allows us to identify patterns and trends, like how the incident rate of a disease can reveal emerging health threats. Understanding these terms is more than memorizing definitions. It's about grasping how they apply to real life scenarios, like how epidemiologists use these terms to track and manage the Ebola epidemic in the Congo. These insights are vital not just for data analysis, but for understanding how diseases intersect with our lives and shape public health. A critical aspect of epidemiology lies in assessing the quality of diagnostic and screening tests. This isn't just about evaluation. It's about gaining a profound understanding of a test's validity and reliability. Validity reveals how accurately a test measures what it's intended to, and reliability indicates whether it provides consistent results over time. Take, for instance, the rapid tests developed for COVID-19. Their effectiveness hinged on high validity and reliability to ensure accurate identification of infected individuals. Imagine if these weren't highly valid or reliable. Understanding these concepts allows us to communicate more effectively about disease risk and treatment options with patients and the public. It's not merely a routine procedure, but a fundamental step in guaranteeing the precision of our diagnostic tools. By thoroughly evaluating these tests, we gain critical insights for informed decision making. This leads to early and accurate disease detection which is a cornerstone of effective patient care and public health strategy. Understanding the natural history of diseases isn't just academic. It's a key element in the puzzle of epidemiology. Knowing how diseases progress from their initial stages to final outcomes helps us assess their severity and impact on individuals and communities. For example, Consider how our understanding of the HIV AIDS progression has evolved. Understanding the pathophysiology of it has essentially turned what was a death sentence into now a chronic disease by developing effective treatments and preventive strategies. Epidemiology is much more than the study of health and disease patterns. It is a vital tool in our ongoing effort to improve health outcomes and enhance quality of life. In this field, we blend knowledge with action, linking the analysis of health determinants to practical disease control and preventive strategies. Let's consider, for example, the role of epidemiology in managing the COVID-19 pandemic. From tracking infection rates to guiding vaccination strategies, epidemiology has been central to our response. 
As we delve into this rich landscape of insights and interventions, we're not just advancing public health, we're also cultivating your professional growth. This journey will arm you with the essential tools for practicing evidence-based medicine. You'll learn to base every decision and intervention on robust epidemiologic research, ensuring your actions as a physician are both effective and informed.